so much for joining us for week five of our video blog series all about pay-per-click advertising. And we have Grayson, the PPC guru master of all ads on Google. What's up, Grayson? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> don't you love my introduction? I just like give you all the it's titles. It's such an honor that I don't know if I deserve, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, he, he's being modest. He really does know everything about PPC and it's ever evolving. So he's constantly learning. So he's a learner and that's awesome. That means he's a good teacher of all things PPC. So if it's okay with you, Grayson, can we just go ahead and jump into my question for this week? Absolutely. Awesome. So this question may have some different facets to it, um, but we get this question a lot. How much money should I be spending on pay-per-click advertising yeah that's a it's a big question and it's one that um i like to answer because it's great to kind of look at that before you jump in and actually figure out like where should we start before we just assume like i just want to throw this much of advertising because i want to and it'll all work out like there's there's a lot to it so you really want to make sure you've got a good foundation of like knowing um, how much it'll actually be best to start off with spending on your PPC ads. So, so what's the first factor that you want to look at? When so your- I would say first, you kind of want to figure out what's your goal in terms of how many um, leads or purchases are you wanting to generate from your PPC ads? So you're wanting to see like, let's say I'm needing um, 10 more leads a month from um, PPC ads. And so then I'm looking to see, okay, well, what is, um, and this has a lot to go into it too, but you wanna kind of figure out what do we think the cost per lead is gonna be? Um, And then, so if I know I need 10 leads at a cost per lead, that's like $200, then um like if it's a you know higher ticket job we deal with home remodelers so that might be a reasonable one um so that means okay so that we would need to put in about two thousand dollars to get 10 leads at 100 cost per leads if my no sorry 200 cost per lead if my math is right sorry right. doing math on the fly no, you're like, right <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you kind of want to work backwards and figure it out like that of like what's my goals how much money will it take to reach those goals? Okay, yeah, that totally makes sense. And that can be a little bit daunting. So like, how how do you know like what a lead price looks like? Like, do you look at search volume? Do you look at co- competition? Like, how do you determine like what a cost per lead yeah. is averaging in an area? Yeah, so um, one way is if you, you know, again, I feel like a lot of ways I'll kind of refer to is like, ask a professional almost, because if you know someone that's in the industry, it's much easier to just ask them what they're seeing. Um, Something you can do, though, if you don't have any history with advertising, or if you don't know anyone that does it, um, is we talked about the keyword research tool. Um, that gives you um, where you can figure out how much search terms are in your area. Um, So if you look at that, you see that search terms are like, let's say $10, make it easy. Um, On average, you're going to spend $10 on a click. So you can kind of do the math backwards and figure out looking at your website, um, how many people convert when they go to your website and there's a lot of different calculators online. So if you kind of just look up a um, cost per lead calculator type thing, that'll help you where it'll take, what's your cost per click gonna be? What is your conversion rate on your website of you know how many people go to your website versus how many people end up contacting you um, or becoming a lead? And then it calculates all that out, tells you, what your cost per lead would be at that cost per click and that conversion rate. So again, it's, it's a lot of like math. It's not hard math, but you know, if that's daunting to you again, you might just want to ask someone that does advertising what they think your cost per lead might be in that area. So would the Google ads platform really be kind of like the place that you would start to figure out, we've Mm -hmm. talked about 
figuring out keyword, but it could also tell you like search volume. Like if people are actually searching for different things, can it tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. So once you've figured out kind of like, this is my goal to spend on PPC to get my um, amount of leads I'm needing you right. then. So that's really honestly just the first step. So right. then you want to actually look and see, okay, is that possible though? Because maybe we have a goal where we need this many leads and it's going to cost us like 5,000 to do, and we would need this many clicks. Right. But um, you look and see on Google and it's like 10 people are searching for that a month. So okay. you're yeah. not going to be able to ever like spend that much money or, I mean, even if it was like a hundred people, you know, you have to look and see what's realistic for being able to spend your budget. Um, so yeah, if you have a much bigger budget and goal, you'll probably really just want to scale back your budget on Google um, and then divert some of that money somewhere else while you start on PPC and then maybe work your way up. See if there's different kinds of terms that you can advertise for as well and build out your campaign your advertising campaign to then be able to handle more budget. But it's always better to start off with a more like realistic um, budget that matches the search volume than starting way high and having to spend um, a bunch of money on just a few clicks. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't want to, like we've said before, you don't just want to be throwing money out there with no strategy, no plan, not knowing if it's going to work. And, and I think that's a good idea, like looking how many people are actually searching for your terms, because yeah. you could think it's one thing, but Google is really going to tell the story of what it really is. Okay, right. so let me ask you this, because we get this question a lot, because it's, it's kind of like relatively, well, it's newer to me, um, the difference between a Google ad and a Google local service ad, because mm -hmm. we know that like people that are providing you know, services and stuff like they, they have these two options, but not many people really understand the local service ads side of it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have seen a lot of like good success with Google local service ads. What they are essentially is a semi newer. They've been around for a few years now, but Google has done this for businesses that provide local services. So um, like electricians, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different examples, home remodelers, uh, auto repair, um, all these different things where you can give Google your business information, almost like a Google My Business profile. Um, it will actually connect the two. And then it shows up at the very top, even above paid search ads, like the normal pay-per-click ads, um, several different results of different businesses so like if I search for a roofer, um, at the very top of results is usually going to be Google local service ads showing me three different businesses that offer roofing services. And it'll tell me their um, like reviews, maybe a little bit about them. And then it'll also show something called a Google guaranteed badge as well. Okay. So when it comes to like your budget, are local service ads more expensive than regular Google ads? Like, how do you figure that out? So the cost per lead on Google local service ads is pretty much always going to be lower than Google ads, which is great because yeah. it's always going to, um, you only pay for leads and then you also, uh, can dispute certain leads that are you say like oh this isn't the service that we added and google charged us you can then go into the system and say this wasn't a legit lead and a lot of times you'll get refunded for that so it ends up being a lot less expensive than google ads so you're paying for for actual conversions of people that clicked on yeah. it is that the difference and so google yeah. so regular google ads you're paying whenever someone clicks on it regardless yeah. if they're going to convert or not and then local yeah. service, you only pay for the ones actually converted and filled out a form? Yes. Well, so on Google, that's a, that, I'm glad you brought that up too. So Google local service ads, another key difference is that you don't go to someone's website from them. You okay. only stay within the Google platform. And like you can see the kind of little profile that you created for it. 
but you have the option then to either call or message um, the company from there. So whenever you call or message, that's whenever the company gets charged. Oh, okay. So it's like Google's acting like your own little freestanding landing page for you. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. So that's a great option. Even if you if you have a terrible website and you are still wanting to generate leads, I would say go for Google local service ads as long as you have some reviews already on Google, like Google My Business, because it connects the two. So if right. you have some like good reviews on Google My Business, um, then I would say try Google local service ads because that way, like you're only paying for leads and yeah, you don't necessarily need a good website for it. Wow. Well, these are really some great options, like for different budgets, like you said, like, um, and, and, and I am glad that I now understand local service ads quite a bit better because I didn't realize how they truly worked. So thank you for that information. Hopefully our viewers have found this super helpful. There is something for every budget and uh, for every stage of your business is, is what it sounds like. Um, but I would always encourage you, and I'm sure Grayson would do this too because he's a professional in this. Like if you don't know what you're doing, talk to a professional, get some opinions, get some outsider information, because the more information you know, the more equipped you are to be able to run your business successfully, run successful ads. Wouldn't you agree, Grayson? <laughs> Absolutely. There's just so many factors like yeah. that you might not know. It might be something you've never heard of or haven't seen, but like someone who's been in the industry might know to look out for that. So we've seen that before and it just saves you a lot of time and money if you ask someone that's dealt with it before. Yeah, totally. Well, I'm glad I asked you all these questions. I'm sure our viewers found them incredibly helpful. Thank you for joining us this month. And be sure to join us next month because we have some fun surprises coming around the corner for our video blogs. You don't want to miss it. All right. Thank you, Grayson. We'll talk to you later.